He took up our infirmities and he bore all our diseases. Matthew 8, 17. I'm glad we're able to have the health and healing service this year. And, and, and not just because it's become, over the past number of years, part of our Advent tradition. Uh, not just because it gives us an opportunity to focus on Jesus, the healer. And not just because there are so many in need of healing in all the different ways in which healing is needed. But also because our lives for the past 21 months have in many large ways been shaped by a concern for health, fear of illness, and pursuit of healing for those afflicted. COVID and everything with it has brought to mind up in the forefront just how important health is and how valuable, how high of a value it is in our, in our culture and how much death is, to the be, is the enemy to be avoided at all costs. I'm not saying we weren't concerned about these things um, before, um, we certainly were and, and will be long after COVID goes away, if it ever does. But, I mean, I think this thing here in church, even before COVID, how many of our, our prayers are prayers for healing? How many of our thanksgivings are thanksgivings for prayers for healing answered? It's, it's a huge problem concern of ours, and it's with us every day, as our bodies are with us every day, and our loved ones are on our minds every day, the, the need for health. But, but COVID and everything with it has, has pushed it to the forefront in a way that we're dealing with it all the time. I mean, here we are, we're in worship, and we're in masks, and some are worshiping online because of health concerns with being here. And we didn't start the evening with a soup supper. COVID. But that doesn't even give the full picture of the need for healing. It's, it's broader than that in the physical concerns with healing. Can we talk about mental health? Because COVID, COVID has been hard on that too, hasn't it? It's become much worse for many in all of the environment, the fears and restrictions and isolation of COVID. Talk to counselors, therapists, their schedules are overwhelmed. Depression, anxiety, addictions, all worse. And the use of, of medications to help cope at an all-time high, and sadly, so is self-medication. Relational health. We've talked about this quite a bit under a Better Together theme, how COVID's been hard on relationships because of isolation, but it's also been hard sometimes on relationships where they're close together. It's very sad that divorce rates are up in COVID. Families divided over how they're handling COVID. Friendships allowed to die or put to death. All this serves to drive home the point. We, we need healing. We need health. More than that, we need this disease to go away. We need all of it to go away, don't we? Cancer, Alzheimer's, diabetes, heart disease, and all the other illnesses 
mental health, ish, mental illnesses, emotional, relational. We want it all to go away. We want death to go away. We need an answer. And we're here tonight gathered around a truth testified in the scriptures that there is an answer and we have an answer and that is Jesus. In his ministry, in his life, Jesus showed again and again that he came to heal. He showed this in his compassion for those afflicted. He showed it in the power that he exercised over sickness, disease, and even death. He showed it in his passion that people be whole. But the point is this. He, he came to bring healing, but he did this not just through these individual acts of healing, that are so prevalent in the gospel accounts. When we say Jesus the healer, Jesus the great physician, we are referring to something bigger and broader than healing this leper, healing this paralytic, healing a mother-in-law of a fever. Because after all, Jesus didn't heal everyone in his ministry. And everyone that he did heal got sick again. And even those he raised from the dead, Lazarus, the widow's son, Jairus' daughter, they all died later. No, the picture, the meaning, the point was bigger than those events. The point is this. He came to heal all disease, all malady, all brokenness, even death itself. He came to address it and to heal it at the root, at the cause, to not just provide a healing, but to totally take it out completely. He came to take away sin, which is at the root and the cause. Not that my sin caused me to get sick, but sin is the brokenness in the world that is manifest in all of the brokenness of unhealthiness, physical, mental, relational. He came to deal with that. And the individual acts of healing were about pointing to that. Yes, his compassion for those afflicted, and yes, his power over the sickness they were dealing with, but all of it to serve as a preview, a picture, a signpost, pointing to, the, to that day when there would be no illness, no sickness, no brokenness, no death. That's why he came. That's why the Savior was sent. That's why God became man. That's why that baby was born in Bethlehem. And that's why having a health and healing service during Advent is very appropriate. It centers us on what this is all about. The reason for the season is that we're sick. All creation is sick. And Jesus has come to bring the cure, not a temporary one. He's come to bring an eternal cure, not through an isolated miracle or healing here or there, although sometimes he does that, and not just through blessing the efforts of doctors and scientists as they come up with new medicines and procedures, and I'm sure he does bless those efforts, but it's more than that. He's come to do this, to bring the healing that's eternal, the ultimate, by giving of himself completely and totally for us, 
for the world, for the universe, for all creation on the cross. And then rising from the dead three days later as the beginning of the new creation in which there is no sickness. That's what resurrection is. The beginning of the new creation, which the beginning of the creation beyond the fall, the new creation where there's no sickness. And it's the healing which is ours in him. See, he came to give us this healing now. And it is ours now. It is our possession now. This is the kingdom. Jesus doesn't give out his blessing in the kingdom and piecemeal. It's the whole thing, and it is yours. Through, by grace, it's a free gift. Through faith, trusting in Christ, if you are a follower of Jesus, you have this now. Even though the complete healing is not yet fulfilled or fully realized in our lives, and it will not be so until the day of resurrection. But it is your possession. It is yours. Along with a forgiveness of sins, that is yours. We are forgiven now. But on that day, the day of resurrection, we will have it all. Everything he came to bring, resurrected, no illness, no sickness, no death, no pain, no frustration, no anguish within, no depression, no addiction. Jesus healing, wholeness, creation, and us as we were created to be, restored, redeemed, resurrected. This is what our hearts yearn for, what they ache for. And sometimes it is an ache, and I, as I I consider, I mean, I'm looking around and I'm seeing faces and some of you I know pretty well and I know the struggles you carry. And I, you know, consider the struggles I know of in our St. John's family and our school family and things people are going through. Oh, this is what we yearn for. The new creation. The resurrection. And this is what Jesus came to bring. That's why the baby in the manger and so today, tonight, we pray for Jesus to work in our lives. We, we pray, what we're praying for, and what we pray for healing, is that he work into our lives a little bit of what we will have in fullness on the day of resurrection. That's what we're praying for. Lord, just give me some of that. I need it. We need it. We pray for the healing of our souls, our hearts, our minds, and our bodies even though we know we will not receive it in full completeness until that day. But we still pray because he is compassionate, because he is powerful, because he's present, because he's at work, and because he answers. He answers our prayers. He may answer with a preview of resurrection and give us healing. He may do that. He may say, wait. But what he will do in his answers also, he will give us now what we need to live as his broken and blessed people in a broken, fallen world. Faith. To work through and live through difficult times. Strength for enduring the road ahead. Hope that comes from knowing that we rest secure in his hands at all times. So yes, we pray for healing. And he will answer.
And so now I invite you to pray. And this is what we will do. Several ways of prayer. In a little bit, I'm going to invite Kevin to come forward. Kevin's going to be either on this side or that side. Open this side, okay? If you just want individual prayer, be off in the corner. Go up to him. Mention what you'd like pray for. He'll pray with you. Okay? Up here at the rail, I will have offering anointing with oil. Now, what's that about? That is an ancient form of prayer. It's not a sacrament. It's not something that is, is magical. It is a tactile prayer that God's people have been using for thousands of years. And what I will do is I'll speak uh, first. Uh, if you come up, I will pray over you silently. And then I will take some of the oil. I will speak a blessing while making with the oil a cross on your forehead. Okay. Come up if you desire. But um, I also want to invite you to all of us at home and here to participate, whether you come up or not. I may be praying, as I pray with people, a little less time than I've done in the past because there's only me up here. Um, we, Pastor Ted was going to help me tonight. He's not feeling well today, so keep him in your prayers as well. So it's just me. But I want to enlist all of you. You can use this time as I'd encourage you, to, as, as, as to be fully engaged as a time for prayer. And one thing you could do is as I am praying for people, as I come to each one, join with me. Pray for them. Even if you don't know them or what they're going through, we can still pray. Pray for God's blessing, his healing, his wholeness, his strength for them. Sometimes I pray visually in my mind, like I envision a light shining on them, God's light of his grace. Or I envision like a shower showering over them, his blessings. Just pray for them. Or glance over, if Kevin's praying with somebody, pray for that person too, where you are. Those of you at home, same thing. Let's be fully engaged. Or maybe you can pray, you'd be thinking also during this time of prayer, praying for your family. Praying for people, other people you know who are ill. Your coworkers, your neighbors. This is a time of prayer. Let us pray.